Hey, I'm Alicia from Worth Mending, and today I'm giving you a very thorough tutorial on how to darn a sock using a darning loom. Specifically, I'm using my handmade Swift darning loom that my partner Scott and I make and design right here in our studio in Kitchener, Ontario. Thanks for being here, and I hope that you find it helpful. My mending project for today is this sock. So you can see there's a hole right in the middle of the ball of the foot there. You can see better if I put my hand inside. So there's our hole and it's thinning quite a bit around the hole as well. I'm going to be using my swift darning loom to fix the hole today. So I'm going to start by putting the work surface inside of the sock. I'm going to line it up so that when I put the loom on, the bottom of the hooks lines up with where I want to make the top of my patch. So like I was saying, we've got some wear around the hole in this case. So I need to make sure I'm anchoring my patch into where the yarn is still intact. So somewhere around here. Oh, and you know what? There's actually a little bit of wear here as well. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's a little thin. So maybe I'll just go for the white line. I'm going to anchor my patch right into the top of that white line where that toe starts. Right about there. Okay, then I'm going to use this. You can use an elastic band, but this is actually just a t-shirt that I tied. It's stretchy. It'll reach around the loom and then down around the work surface like this. So everything's in place. And as I said, where the bottom of the hooks lands is about where the top of the patch is going to be. So just pull that up so it's exactly where I want it. So as I said, there's a little bit of wear over here. So I think I'm going to use these hooks going to start with this one and then kind of go maybe all the way to here as well. So I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hooks. And then my patch is going to end just down here where the sock is intact and looking good. So about that long. And that's important because it'll help me measure my warp threads. I like to get just a rough idea of how much yarn or thread I'm going to need. So I'll measure, I'll leave a little bit extra for a tail, and I'll kind of measure from there up around the hook and back down. So I said I needed nine of these, so I'm going to, that's doubled, and then I'm going to make that about nine times. And that should be about enough to get all of my warp threads without having to weave in extra ends. Thread this needle. Then we're ready to get started. So as I said, I'm going to be starting with this hook right here. And so I have to kind of draw a line down to about where I want the corner of my patch to be. So that's where I want to come up with my first thread. And I'm going to, so I, can't, I went in and I'm, I left a long stitch kind of underneath and I'm going to leave a tail so that I can weave it in later. And then I'm just going to go up and around each hook. I'm going to tack down at the bottom. I find it can be a little bit tricky to determine the spacing down at the bottom here. So I often end up taking it out and trying again until it's exactly how I want it. I just want to keep everything parallel so that the spacing at the bottom is pretty much the same all the way along. And 
the very last warp threads land below their hook as well. I've got some extra thread here, so I'm just gonna go for that 10th hook. And then when I finish, I'm gonna do the same thing as when I started. I'm just going to bring the needle up a good distance away from that last corner. Now I could pick this up and start going in the other direction, but I'm gonna be using two colors for this one, just so it's easier to see the difference between the warp and the weft threads. For the weft threads, which are the ones that go horizontally, I don't really need to measure the length of thread. Just something that's gonna be comfortable to work with and kind of as long as, as is comfortable to work with is how I like to do it. Okay, so to work across, same thing. I'm gonna go in a bit away and then I'm actually gonna come up someplace over here. This is maybe a little bit more of an advanced technique, but I like it because it anchors the patch even further into the fabric. So what I'm doing is I'm coming up a little bit away from the patch and I'm just gonna do a bit of a running stitch through those knit stitches until I land right beside where I want the patch to be. And then I'm gonna make sure I come up right at that corner. So if you don't want to do this extra running stitch, you just go in here and then come up right at the corner and then continue. Okay, I like to point the hooks in the direction that I'm working like this, and then I use the butt end of the needle. It's easier to get in between the hooks without splitting the thread. So like this, and then I pull the needle all the way to the bottom, pull that thread through. And then here, I'm just gonna continue that same running stitch pattern again. So it'll go over under for just a couple stitches on each side. And again, that's just to reinforce the area around the patch and anchor it a little bit better into the fabric. So this, is, this step here is going to be the same whether I'm working here or here without those extra stitches. I come in and then back up just above where I finished that last row. And then here I just need to remember I'm committed. I need to do more running stitches all the way back to the edge of my patch. As I work each row, I always come in and push the previous row down with my needle. That helps to tighten it up and just, I, I'm all about getting as tight of a patch as I can. I feel like it lasts a lot longer that way. It's got kind of, it's as if it has a higher thread count. We'll go once more in this direction always flipping the hooks as I switch directions, and that changes the position of the threads. Just like on a large size loom, it makes it easier to get that over-under pattern. That's pretty much the technique, so I'm just gonna continue this all the way up to the top of my patch. I kind of pull on these running stitches as I go because I don't want them to be too tight. We're at a point here where the thread is just about at its end, so I'm going to change out threads. This is a really good place to show you how my weft pick works. Yours might also look like this. It's the same thing. So what I do with the weft pick is 
use it like this <laughs> to just pick those wick rows down like this. And it really helps to tighten up the weave on your patch, which makes it stronger and last longer. Uh, this one is just barely long enough to go across. I'm just going to bring this one back to the other side and then get started with my new thread. Okay, we are going to cast off at the top here. Right now it's like a little pocket. We're going to close that so that these loops are stuck to your sock. So you can see here that this very last thread, I didn't tack it down. And it's just going over that last loop. So I'm just going to want to tack it down right at the end here. I'm going to bring it up at the top just where that orange loop landed like this. And then from here, I'm just going to tack this row down. So because I want to continue the pattern, I'm going to go in just from the back of this loop. Pull that thread through. And then I just insert the needle like this, and I'm, I'm kind of making a running stitch all the way across the top. As I'm working along, I just like to check on, check on everything and check the tension, make sure that it looks like it's blending in with the rest of my darn. Right at the end here, I'm just going to dip that needle back in right at the end of my patch. And for the sake of the pattern that I was doing to reinforce this, maybe I'll just do another couple of running stitches. Dip my needle down again, come out just a little distance away from my patch. Okay. There it is. Use my weft pick again to move these threads around. They will settle out, you know, when you wear it, when you wash it. But to get them, <laughs> but to get ourselves off, you know, in a good way on the right foot here, I'll just use my weft pick again. Nice. Okay, there it is. That's our patch. We just have to deal with all of these ends. Okay, so what I'm going to do to deal with the ends here, 
just gonna remove the work surface like so and we're gonna flip the sock inside out so on the inside you can see that I covered the hole and the thinning area around the hole which is awesome I also reinforced some of that thinning around the patch with those running stitches. So where these big loops are, I just pull on those, bring all of my bring all of my ends over here to the wrong side. Okay. So we're on the wrong side. We've got all our threads. I think I'm going to put my work surface back inside. You can just knot these. I don't want to. Instead, what I'm going to do, since these ends are so short, what I'm going to do is, what I'm going to do is just weave my needle in and out through a bunch of these purple stitches that I can see on the wrong side, like this. And then I'm going to thread this back onto my needle. Okay, just like that. And then I can pull it through and kind of pick it out so that it's not too tight, of course. Recurring theme. Don't want to make sure anything's pulling too tightly on the fabric, but we do want to make sure that those warp and weft threads are tight against each other. Maybe I'll do one more for you. I'm going to do this longer one because it's going to be easier for camera, but um, then I'll go through and do all of them in the exact same way. <laughs> I don't want you to have to sit through me weaving in all six of these ends. Actually, I'm going to show you an orange one as well. What I'm going to do with the orange one, just because it shows up a little bit easier on this blue, Choose a long one. So if I hadn't done all of these extra running stitches on the side, I would just see all of these loops on the back. But I'm going to do the same thing. You just treat them the exact same way. So I just weave my needle through these loops, catch a whole bunch of them. Nice. And you just pull it through and what I'm going to do is just snip it. Okay, so that's three out of eight. I'll be back. I'm back. That was so quick. I weaved in all of the ends. Just take this guy out. Flip the sock back the right way. And bam! There you have it. That there's a darn. Not bad, eh?